Hola a todos. Today we are going to review essay writing when it comes to themes at Cape for Spanish, okay? So this essay that will be based on themes will be section B of paper three. So today we are going to learn how to construct that essay. All right, so let's first look at the structure, all right? So our essay needs to have three components, as most essays do. An introduction, a body, and a conclusion. And when it comes to the body, we want to present three to four points. That would be a good range, three to four, but no less than three. Our introduction will be one paragraph, our body will be three or four, depending on how many points we present. And then we have one paragraph for the conclusion. The essay should be written in the third person, yes, because the third person gives the most objective voice. Therefore, it is the default for many essays. Not all essays have to, to be written in the first person, in the third person, but that's usually the default because it presents the most objective voice, okay? So for this essay, third person. So let's look at what should be contained within each paragraph. Let's start with the introduction. So we have our hook. Our hook is going to be the very first line of our essay, and it is just an interesting statement that is used to capture the reader's attention from the start. So if we want readers to be invested from the start, we can use a hook. And a, a hook, as I have here, can be anything related to the story, right? It could be a quote, it could be a statement, whatever, but it's related to the story, right? And it's used to capture the reader's attention. After we have written our hook, we then proceed to a summary or general information about the novel. So this is where you can summarize the novel or just give general information about the novel, right? You do that in two sentences. Then we end the conclusion by stating our thesis statement. And this is what we are going to, these are the examples that we are going to use to illustrate the theme, okay? So I should be able to read your thesis and highlight the points that you're going to present. You don't explain them, of course, but you list them. So I should be able to see, okay, what are the examples that you're going to use, right? So that is our introduction. Mm -hmm. Hook, summary, or general information about the novel, and then a thesis statement, right? So we move on to the body. So we start with a topic sentence, and this will be the example that we are analyzing. We give a brief explanation, right? So we don't expand too much on it, but we give enough details that a person can understand, okay, yes, this is the example, but okay, I, I understand now where you're going with it. And then of course, after that, you would explain and provide supporting evidence. But from your topic sentence, the reader should be able to see where you're going with that, right? Or what a specific aspect you're looking at. And of course, I'm going to show you examples of all of this. So don't worry, right? No se preocupen. Once you've done that, you would proceed to explain that point further and provide supporting evidence. Now, supporting evidence will be points, which will, not points, it will be quotes taken, which will be taken from the text, right? So when it comes to the quotes, the quotes must be relevant. They must be used to support your, what you are already explaining, okay? So you can't just extract any point, any, quote that you feel like they must be relevant all right now very important yes 
we know that you are talking about specific examples from a story, but please remember not to tell the story because the examiners already are familiar with the story, are already familiar with the story. So you don't need to include details that give context, no. Just focus on that specific example. And once again, I'm going to show you what I mean. But if the details are not relevant, they should be excluded. So just focus on the examples that illustrate the theme that you're given. You don't have to waste time explaining how X got to Y and how what. If it's not important, you can um. You 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 should not include them. Those background details are not important. The only details that are important would be those that are relevant to the example. All right. And conclusion, we restate our thesis, of course, in other words. And uh, then we have a summary statement, which is going to be the central idea from all of the points presented, right? You're going to present three or four different theme, different examples, but they will all deal with the same theme, but you can extract the, the central message that emerges from those examples. And then, of course, we can end or central idea, right? And you can end with a moral or a message. Mm -hmm. So we can you can state the lesson that can be learned from the story. Mm -hmm. All right. So this concludes the struct that concludes the structure. Now we proceed to examples. But before we get to the examples, let's look at the instructions. Write an essay in English using 450 to 500 words on one of the following themes. You must refer in detail to one named text. This text must not be the same one on which you answered in section A. All questions must be cited, all quotations must be cited in Spanish. There you have it. So you must use quotations from the text. And of course, you must write your story on a different on a story which is different to the one you would have used to answer the literary analysis okay so yes unit one el individuo y la sociedad may june 2015 Society and its norms often limit an individual's happiness. And of course, we're going to use como agua para chocolate to address this theme. And you would, re and you would also realize that the stories are, are also mentioned under the, the themes. But once again, it is going to depend on the school that you attend, okay? Because some schools use different text right and a good practice as you see here i would have extracted the points before i wrote the essay and that is very useful it saves you time because you have already done the hard part right so let's look at the points that i would have extracted tita had to take care of mama elena as she was the youngest daughter this prevented her from marrying Pedro, the man she loved. Mm -hmm. Pedro was unable to marry Tita, the woman he truly loved. As a result, he was forced to marry Rosara, who was offered to him by Mama Elena as she was the eldest of the daughters. Her Trudis was, it, was only able to enjoy freedom after she left the ranch. She was even free to explore her sexuality as she worked in a brothel. She disregarded the tradition of being conservative, which dictated that she had to be married before she could engage in sexual relations, right? So those are the three examples of characters that suffered at the hands of tradition, right? So these are characters that, that would have been forced to 
make choices or would have been forced to do things against their will because of tradition. Okay? So, yes. I notice I just focus on the point. I did not give all the back story and the and other details, just focus on the example, right? So society and its norms often limit an individual's happiness. So the are the points that I present have to illustrate that. Okay. So let's get to the essay. And of course, I give it a, a title because, like I said, I want you guys to be the best. Tradition versus happiness. Could not have wanted a more fitting title than that, given what we will discuss. Tradition can be defined as the customs of a group of people. So as you see, I started with the definition. Como Agua para Chocolate is a story written by Laura Esquibel, which tells the story of a conservative Mexican family that seeks to uphold traditions. The De La Garza family is a matriarchy headed by Mama Elena, and the story is centered on the life of the youngest daughter of Mama Elena, Tita. Well, tradition can be a wonderful, well, let me stop there. So from Como Agua to, to Tita, all of that would represent my summary or general information about the novel. So you would have, I would have told you what I would, I would have told you what it is about, or, or what what it generally dealt with, right? So I mentioned the author, of course, and the protagonist of the story so let's get to let's get to the, the thesis statement well tradition can be a wonderful way of preserving culture it often limits individual happiness and this is very evident in the lives of tita pedro and her chududis mm -hmm. right so that will be my thesis statement because you can see the three examples that i am going to to explain Right? So those are the three examples. Mm -hmm. Tita was destined to take care of her mother until she died because she was the youngest daughter in the family. This tradition stipulated that she was not allowed to marry anyone and must dedicate her life to caring for her mother. Por ser la más chica de las mujeres, a ti te corresponde cuidarme hasta el día de mi muerte. Naturally, this frustrated Tita, and she questioned it as she was, as she thought it was cruel. However, when she protested, she was scolded by her mother. Nadie en mi familia ha protestado ante esta costumbre y no va a ser una de mis hijas quien lo haga. Therefore, she was not even allowed to have an opinion about her future. So as you see, the first quote would illustrate the rigidity of the tradition, okay? And this was actually a quote from Mama Elena talking to Tita. And the second quote would have illustrated that the tradition had to be followed regardless of how she felt, okay? So it didn't matter how Tita felt, she had to follow the rules, all right? So as you see, both quotations are relevant to what I am explaining, okay? Continuing. This tradition not only affected Tita, but it also affected Pedro as he wanted to marry Tita, but the tradition prohibited their union, okay? As a result, he was persuaded to marry Tita's older sister, Rosara, However, he only he only agreed to the marriage so that he could be close to Tita, and that was the only consolation in his mind. Logre con esta boda lo que tanto an elaba estar cerca de usted 
la mujer que verdaderamente amo. This decision was very hard for Pedro as he never loved Rosara. Right. So the same tradition that prevented Tita from marrying anyone also would have affected Pedro because he was in love with Tita, but he could not marry her because of the same tradition, right? So he was persuaded to marry Tita's older sister, Rosara, and he only did this so that he could be close to Tita. As the court illustrated, that would have been Pedro speaking to Tita, informing her about the motives for the wedding. That he actually only did it so that he could be close to her. Right? So just imagine how hard that must have been for both of them. Mm -hmm. All right, continuing. Given that the family was very conservative, the only way to experience freedom was to rebel, and this was exemplified by Herr Trudis. One night, she fled the ranch with a soldier, and she engaged in sexual intercourse, which was for forbidden as she was unmarried. Under Mama Elena's custody, she would have never been able to be an independent woman. Claro que su imaginación era en este aspecto bastante limitada por su falta de experiencia. Mm -hmm. Her escape allowed her to fully explore her sexuality and desires without having to conform to the norms forced upon her by her family. In fact, her escape was even celebrated. Tita lo preparaba cada año como ofrenda a la libertad que su hermana había alcanzado. Working in a brothel was the most blatant way that her trudis could disregard her mother and by extension, the tradition. Right. So under Mama Elena's custody, her trudis would have been imprisoned. She would have felt like a prisoner. Right? She had no say in her own she she could not really express herself. That 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 that's a better way of putting it. She could not express herself. The freedom to express herself and to explore herself would have been very limited if she was if she had stayed with her mo mother. Right? But because she fled the ranch, she was no free to do what she wanted. And working in a brothel would represent the biggest, the most blatant way that she could disregard the tradition of being conservative, okay? So the first quote that I mentioned would have illustrated how she, her lack of expression, right? Well, the imprisonment that she would have face under Mama Elena's custody. Well, the second court would have demonstrated, would have also hinted at the fact that they were in bondage, <laughs> if, you, if you will. But now that she's free, she can do what she wants to do, right? So she has attained freedom. So obviously this tradition of being conservative would have limited her freedom, right? Mm -hmm. And our conclusion, overall, tradition limits happiness, and this is easily visible in the lives of Pedro, Herturudis, and Tita. All three of these characters chose happiness and thus broke the traditions that were forced upon them. This story demonstrates that happiness will always guide an individual's actions. So as you see, I would have restated my thesis. I would have given the central idea from all three examples. So all three of these characters chose happiness and thus brought the traditions that were forced upon them. Mm -hmm. Right? And what does this teach us? It demonstrates that happiness will always guide an individual's actions. So the word count, 485. So that would be an example of an essay from unit one. Now we go on to unit two. 
El Mundo Moderno, May June 2014. It is in situations of great distress that the best of humanity is made evident. Mm -hmm. So we need examples to demonstrate that. So we're going to use the story Cuentos de Eva Luna, or the stories, rather. So, so the first example is going to be Dos Palabras. Belisa used hardships to motivate her to obtain a better standard of living as she became successful selling words. Mm -hmm. La Mujer del Juez. When Judge Hidalgo died, his wife Casilda was only concerned about the well-being of their children as she was willing to sacrifice her life so that they could be saved. Un camino hacia el norte. Although Clabelis, his son, was born with disabilities, his great-grandfather, Jesus, was patient and did not give up on him. He even refused to allow a rich family to adopt him, even though he seemingly would have had a better life. De barros estamos hechos, Rolf Carle, un, a, a newscaster, I was really saying un, <laughs> a newscaster was willing to risk his life to save Asusena, a 13 year old girl trapped in the mud. So these are four examples of how the best of humanity emerges under situations of great distress. But let's get to the essay. And of course, I gave it a title, Hardship Creates Better People. Tough times never last, but tough people do. Interesting quote. Cuentos de Eba Luna are a collection of short stories written by Isabel Allende, and they convey a variety of themes such as love. Moreover, they can be described as an analysis of humanity, given that one is able to observe how persons behave when they are put in very perilous situations. Cuentos de Eba Luna demonstrate that the best of humanity emerges from the peril, and this is evident in these four characters. Belisa, Casilda, Jesus, and Rolf Cadle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that will be my introduction. As you see, I started with a quote that you know it was that is related to the story. Then I proceed to summarize and give general information about the story, and then I have my thesis statement. And you can see the examples that I will utilize, right? And because Quintos de Eba Luna would be would consist of short stories. Each in each example that I present, I will you I will identify the story, and that's something you should do. Okay. In the story Dos Palabras, Belisa was born into abject poverty and even lost some of her family during a drought. Durante una interminable sequía, le tocó enterrar a cuatro hermanos menores. In spite of this, she decided that her destiny was not going to be a life of suffering, and she took the initiative to learn about words so that she could support herself. These unfavorable circumstances motivated Belisa to strive for a better life. Vender palabras le pareció una alternativa decente. The decision to sell words shows that the hardship she faced was a blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, the first quote that I would have used illustrated the hardship, the fact that she had to bury four younger brothers, right? And then the second quote would have demonstrated the, initi the initiative she took to improve her life. She was determined not to. She was determined not to. She was determined not to see life in from the lens of poverty and suffering. She was determined to overcome those challenges 
to be prosperous, right? So yes. Mm -hmm. And I was just explaining how both quotes are related, right? To the theme. Secondly, Casilda's decision to seduce to seduce Nicol Nicolas Vidal in the story La Mujer del Juez is an example of how the best of humanity emerges under situations of great distress. When Judge Hidalgo suffered a heart attack and left his family at the mercy of Vidal, Casilda took action immediately to protect her children. She was not even concerned about her own safety. Deseo ser opulenta y fornida para oponerles mayor resistencia y ganar tiempo para sus hijos. Casilda demonstrates what a mother is willing to do to protect her children. Okay. So the first quote, no, not the first quote. So the quote that I use here would illustrate the sacrifice that the mother was willing to make. She basically gave herself, um, she was willing to sacrifice her life. So when the army, or Nicolas, Nicolas Vidal's army, came for the judge who had already died, when they came for him, she would basically give herself to them so that her children would be safe, right? So that's what that quote illustrates. Mm -hmm. The sacrifice that the mother was willing to make. Mm -hmm. Continuing, in the story Un Camino Hacia el Norte, the great-grandfather of Juan Jesus exemplified unconditional love. Although his great-grandson was unable to hear and speak, he was patient and still cared for the boy. He even refused to allow him to be adopted by a rich family who seemingly could better provide for him. Nunca hay que desprenderse de los hijos, pase lo que pase. Jesus' devotion to Juan reveals his kind-hearted nature. So, of course, that quote would illustrate the unconditional love because he basically said, no matter what happens, you never get rid of children, right? So he did not see his disabilities as a burden, right? And of course, I said seemingly could provide better, provide seemingly could better provide for him because, of course, it turns out that the organization was a fraudulent one and a criminal one, right? So. Yeah, that's why you I would have chosen the to use the word seemingly. Mm -hmm. And lastly, Ralph Carles' decision to stay by Azucena's side in the story De Barros Estamos Hechos is a demonstration of compassion. He abandoned his job as a newscaster so that he could encourage her to be up optimistic in the face of her impending death. He risked his life to help her even if he could only provide emotional support. Pero él seguía hablándole en la oscuridad para demostrarle que no se habría ido y para vencer el acoso de la incertidumbre. In addition, his actions exemplified courage, okay? So, of course, that quotation illustrated the fact that he never left her side and he was, you know, risking his life because he is even in the darkness. Even when it was dark, he was still there trying to raise her spirits, to raise her spirits. Even though it, she was, was going to die, he still wanted to help her to be optimistic, right? So those actions would have illustrated not, not only courage, but compassion, right? Overall, Ralph Carle, Jesus, Belisa, and Casilda 
proved that the best of humanity is revealed in perilous times. These characters made powerful choices based on their circumstances. Thus, these stories illustrate that hardship is necessary for growth to be attained. Mm -hmm. Very good message. So as you see, we state, I restated my thesis. Um, pre I presented the central idea from all of the examples, and then I ended with the moral. All right. As you see, 480 words. All right. Eso es todo por hoy. Espero que les haya gustado el video. Muchas gracias por ver y hasta la próxima.